Hi everybody, it's Dr. Modi Charter again from the Charter Group Bird Games. I'm very happy to finally come and meet you all. Uh, I've been hiding behind a camera for the last three years, th three years more or less. Uh, I never wanted to be a YouTuber, not one of my goals in my life. But I decided that uh, one of the strengths that we have at the Charter Group Bird Games is we're based behind a scientific research group. So I know we get to see all these amazing things in our live streams. Uh, but a lot of times we don't know exactly what we see. So I want to utilize the information that we have, some from my own research, some from other people's research, and try to answer different questions or different topics that interest the author, maybe interest you. So first of all, if you have any questions, uh, for example, uh, why do barn owls swallow play whole? Why do kestrels do not? Why do uh, um, barn owls live in filthy boxes? A lot of people complain about the filthy, dirty boxes or nests that they live in. Uh, why do birds fight? All these interesting uh, pieces of uh, uh, questions that you may have, we'll hopefully be able to answer them. So my goal is once a week to upload a new movie, uh, and I really hope this is something that will continue on to provide you some new insights, and I'll try to keep it moving, not boring you too much. As I said, my goal has never been a YouTuber, um, not even a little bit. So I'll tell a little bit first about a little bit about myself uh, and how I reached this point. We created the Charter Group Bird Camps about three years ago. Uh, and initially, w one of the main things was I wanted to pass on some of the cool information and things that we get to see the general public. So during my period as a researcher, I got to see amazing things. E every year I get to see amazing things, but the public typically does not want to see that, doesn't get to see that. Um, so the goal was to add these live cameras and different things that we research and so that you can enjoy it on the one hand, but on the other hand, you enjoy it from afar. And you don't disturb, because anytime we're present at a nest or anything, we can disturb and cause damage. And our goal ultimately is not only the research the animals, but also to help and conserve them. So we don't want to uh, um, hurt any animals. So, so this was one way of, of passing on that information. Another goal of the channel was is that um, through your observations, you actually help us learn about these animals. Uh, it's called a form of citizen science. You are the citizen science. Every time you write in a chat that you saw a barn owl brought a juror or a mouse at such and such time, you write that timestamp, we actually collect that data and eventually we're going to use it to, uh, to, to, uh, to increase our knowledge about the different species. So you're actually helping, actively helping us to, to learn more about these amazing uh, animals. So in general, that was the idea is, is passing on this knowledge. Um, luckily, we, uh, we have a group of uh, 12 volunteers for throughout the world that you can see them in the chat. They help keep the chat going, make sure people do not use uh, inc uh, uh, verbal, uh, uh, don't verbally abuse or swear words or cuss words or anything like that. And the moderators, they, um, they, they help a lot by collecting actually the data and they, they're in direct contact with us at all times. If something happens, if a camera stops use it working or something like that, we have a nice little WhatsApp group, we write to each other and we're able to uh, quickly, uh, hopefully quickly fix those um, uh, problems. So we're very proud of this uh, channel. We hope it'll grow. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. Uh, how did I reach this point? Um, basically, as a kid, I always wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh, when I was in um, uh, my undergraduate degree, I started working as a vet tech, and I quickly realized that veterinary science, to be a veterinarian is great, it's important work, but it's not for me. Uh, a dog comes in sick, you have to treat the dog. We only treat the dog if the people can pay for the treatment for the dog. If you don't, then you don't treat the dog. So it's kind of a, there's a very strong business side of it, being a veterinarian, and I hate business, it's not for me, I realize have to do something else. Luckily, I started a, um, uh, at, during my undergraduate studies, I also took a course on ornithology, and I realized that you could actually be a scientist. I had no idea what a scientist uh, means, what it means to research uh, different topics in the world. And I, ornithology is a zoology of birds, uh, biology of birds, or, um, so you can uh, study birds as a, a form of living. I did know of, you know, National Geographic, BBC, Discovery, all the amazing videos that come out of those uh, networks, but those are not typically researched. They're, they're films about maybe work that a researcher does. Behind the scenes, there's somebody who's actually doing this sort of research. Um, so that's what I wanted to do was be a, a, an ornithologist research bird. So I went on and studied my master's and my PhD at Tel Aviv University. 
finished those. I did postdocs. I had uh, the pleasure of working with amazing scientists like Alexander Roulin from Switzerland, the best probably Barnard research in the world. Uh, Professor Alexander Roulin, uh, Ale sorry, Alexander Roulin said that. Uh, Ranatan from uh, the Hebrew University is an expert, one of the top five easily uh, experts in movement ecology that I learned so much from these people. And now I'm an independent researcher. I have my own research group. And we do different research topics that interest us. So that basically people ask, well, you know, okay, that's great. Well, so what do you do? I wake up every morning and my job is to basically do what I want to do. And that is to ask questions regarding to wildlife and answer those questions. So how do I go about doing that? So I ask a question, that's great, but if to do a research you need money, so typically we have to raise funds for each specific research project. If we succeed raising the funds, um, then I have to find a student or, or a technician to help work with me to help collect the data. We collect the data, we analyze it. Uh, after we analyze it, we write a paper. Um, and then after that point, that's the end of the, the, that specific project. But, there is a huge but, um, those scientific pa papers are great. I love them, I write them, I will write them in the future. The problem is that people that see them is very limited. Scientific research can be sometimes boring, the papers, the, the literature. So the limit, the general public typically does not get to see a lot of these things. So I wanted to provide the, the general public with a lot of the uh, information that we get from the scientific literature, but to pass it on. So that was one of my main goals with creating the Charter Group board cams, which directly through that is through the, the, the webcams uh, um, is the um, is to introduce the, pop, the, the public, not only seeing, but learning. Now we're going to invest, seeing we've done very well, the learning we haven't done as well, uh, but hopefully from now on, uh, um, we'll start providing more additional information in these clips. Uh, that said, the, the moderators have done an amazing job providing information in the chats. Uh, sometimes they ask questions, sometimes they don't. They do an amazing job, and without them, there would not be any channel to this day. So. Um, in general, my, my job is to ask different questions of related to wildlife that I want to answer. And, and, and I, I've researched mainly birds, but also some mammals. We have projects with rodents. Why? In order to learn about the barn owls, you have to learn about their prey, which are prey are small mammals, mainly rodents, but also uh, some other small mammals, mainly uh, jerds. So in order, uh, not jerds, sorry, shrews. So in order to learn about the barn owls, you have to learn about their diet. In order to learn about their diet, you have to study those species. Uh, we have another new project with uh, rodenticide use that we're also going to be studying some larger mammals like golden jackals. But in general, the majority of research uh, is on birds, um, which I love and, and uh, it never gets boring. We always have uh, three, four, five different research projects running at one time. Uh, and, and they're always at different stage, one in the beginning, middle, end, all different stages, so it never get boring. Uh, it's it's uh, truly a, a fun job, and it's also fun, part of my fun job is trying to pass on that information to you, and and, and this is what I hope you'll be able to do in some of these uh, short video clips that we'll, we'll start making. Try to keep them short, not too boring. Uh, you know, um, I like to talk, as you can see. I don't particularly like talking to a camera. It's kind of a little weird for me. My daughters always make fun of me uh, with the selfies and stuff like that. I look like a koala with my eyes are bright open, um, but I'll work on that also. So <clears throat> if you have any questions, if you have any specific comments or any topics that you'd like me to try to answer and make a clip, first of all, f please feel free to do that. Uh, we'll make upload at least one clip a week and try to answer different questions using also different video clips from the channel um, as examples. Um, and, and, and I do want to take this opportunity to say that this whole project, uh, which I hope will continue in the future, was made possible from a, a generous uh, donator that donated the majority of the equipment. Um, also, some smaller donations. We have a, a crowd fund. Uh, donation. Thank you very much for everybody who uh, uh, donated. We always need that money because there's a huge cost, not only streaming, uh, but also fixing. A lot of our systems are actually solar powered, the camera system, that we uh, build these systems from pan uh, solar panels, batteries, uh, controllers, and uh, some basic um, uh, electricity um, know-how. So we're able to basically stream anywhere in the world without electricity, which is quite a feat. But uh, sometimes there's equipment that needs to be replaced. 
Israel, the weather can be very hot, above 40, 100 degrees easily. So, uh, Fahrenheit, um, that heat destroys the equipment. Um, so we do have to replace this equipment. It's very costly. Also the cost of the time of the people. Uh, currently, when I go out and work, it doesn't cost money, but when I pay the technician, Amir Ezra, or other people, it does cost money. So there's a huge cost, so thank you very much for the donations. Uh, this is very helpful. And uh, the one last thing I want to say is um, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. The more people subscribe, the more people will see the channel. So thank you very much. And again, I appreciate everybody's um, Co cooperation and participation in the project. Uh, we will actually be using a lot of your observation in scientific articles of citizen science on the different topics. So all the times you write, the, the timestamps, what happened and stuff like that, we're actually going to use that data. So it really, really helps. Um, so it's, it's a unique project of, of providing not only entertainment to people and not only learning education to people, but also we're going to hopefully make some science out of this, which is uh, amazing. It's a win-win-win for everybody and hopefully also at the same time uh, protect wildlife, which is one of my main goals. Um, I understand sometimes um, there's uh, different groups of people. Uh, in general, in uh, the YouTube world with these live streams, you have uh, basically two groups. They're the one the group of people that intervene with nature, and then you have the people that don't intervene. Uh, I classify myself more a person that w does not intervene or try to keep the intervention to a very uh, minimal amount. Um, maybe I'll make a video tape about this later on. But in general, th the main reason is, from my experience, the more we intervene, the more damage we do. Uh, nature has evolved to be the best it can and a lot of times the stuff we see that we want to help uh, w did not need our help um, so we'll see this later on you know with nestlings dying and stuff like that it's very hard to see um, but it's it's um, it's a reality and these things are harsh sad uh, I understand it uh, I don't want to see anything die I did not work with birds to see anything die but it's a, a part of reality, uh, nature that uh, these birds die uh, because there's not enough resources to, to provide for them. So in cases of nature, the, when there's the stronger ones survive or the better parents are able to feed their nesting, they survive and go on. Uh, whereas the, when there's not enough food, some die. When there's enough food, everybody survives. It's a big, nice, happy ending. Uh, which is great. We wish everything could be a happy ending, but not uh, as it, we see in movies like Disney and stuff like that, which are amazing. I like them. I grew up on them. Uh, these PG style movies, but nature's not PG. Uh, there's not always a happy ending. It could be very harsh. Uh, listen, a barn owl, for a barn owl to live, it has to kill and eat cute little rodents. That's how it survives. The, uh, the, the mice, the voles, and here's where you have a gerd. What's a gerd? Basically, if you go to a pet store and buy a gerbil, that's not a gerbil. It's actually a Mongolian gerd. Um, a, there, there's such a thing as a gerbil, but they're a little bit smaller. Um, so here's where we have a Tristum's gerd, which is a pest in agriculture that barn owls eat. They're quite common. Uh, but if you were to capture a gerd in nature, a Tristum gerd, a cute little pet, just like a, ger a gerbil, gerbil or a Mongolian ger gerd that you'd buy in a pet store. Um, these are really cute and nice, and you can grow them, raise them, but nature is, barn owls eat them. Barn owls help control and keep their populations also low. That's why farmers in Israel add nesting boxes for barn owls in order to use the barn owls as a form of rodent control instead of using harmful and deadly pesticides. So it's sad, one animal dies, another one lives. But also in, within barn owl pairs or kestrel pairs or common kestrel, lesser kestrels, when that one nestling dies, it helps the other nestling survive. There's not enough resource for everybody. If you have two pieces of pizza and it's not enough for four nestlings, if you were to divide that f two pieces of pizza four ways, it w actually would hurt all four nestlings. Whereas if you only give one piece of pizza, one each nestling, and two survive and two die, a lot of times that's what that's an, that's what the resources exist and then they can survive and fledge because there's something a lot of people do not ever think about is um, what we see in a nest is nice and great you know a lot of people can feed the nestlings and fatten them up 
Uh, but what, what happens is they fledge, they leave the nest. If there's not enough resources in these areas, they end up dying and dying from the worst possible death, death which is typically star starvation, which we don't want that either. So m my personal opinion, I don't intervene. I can't intervene, we can't fix the whole world. And listen, let's face it, we have enough problems as humans, there's people with mental health problems that don't get uh, 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 medication or, or, or help. So we sometimes have to first conser fix and help ourselves. Uh, and if we can't do that, how do you expect us to help the wild animals and stuff like that? That a lot of times they don't need our help. Uh, sometimes the only thing they need us is to leave them alone. So that's a short introduction about me. Um, if you have any more questions about me or the research or anything else, again, write them in the comments. Um, and I'll try to keep these videos going once a week. And I can not thank you enough for participating and watching the channel, participating in the chat. For those of you who donated, all of you, whatever you did, I really appreciate it. And please do not forget to subscribe and keep your eyes out for the, the next video. Have a great day. Keep on watching.